So this was my foray into uh, into a uh, Python. Uh, as I said, I had to write a, a, an assembler that basically did this, turn symbolic machine language here into binary machine language here. And my program is right here. And I'll share all this too, because again, I, I'm very curious, those that are experienced uh, in Python to maybe help see where I might be able to refactor this. And then I'm also going to create an, uh, an object-oriented version of it at some point. So um, I would like to replay this if it's okay. I know you guys did this just a minute or two. It's two and a half minutes. So I do want to give some Hi. context here. So let me know if somebody can't see this right now. I don't want to do that again. I apologize. We are very pleased to introduce Nancy Tetris part one. Anyone can take this course, including people who have no background in computer science or engineering. The course consists of six mission projects, each focusing on building a different module of the computer's hardware. In each project, you have to build a set of chips. And for each such chip, we provide a complete chip specification, and you then have to figure out how to build this functionality using chips that you built before. But don't worry, you will have to do no soldering whatsoever. Instead, you will build all the chips using the hardware simulator, just like hardware engineers actually do in practice. In the first three projects of the course, we start with the most elementary logic game called NAND. Using detailed project materials, we will guide you through the process of building a chipset, a central processing unit, and a memory unit. In the next two projects, you will integrate all the chips that you built before into a complete general purpose computer named HAC. We will then connect the computer to a keyboard and a screen, and oh, the computer will snap into action. In the last project in the course, we develop an assembler which enables writing programs using symbolic commands rather than binary code. This will allow us to use the hack platform to run all sorts of cool programs like Tetris and practically any other program that comes to your mind. And that's it from NAND to Tetris in six weeks. The course requires about five to 10 hours of work per week and assumes no previous background in computer science or engineering. All the knowledge necessary to take the course and build the computer will be given in the course itself. So if you wish to understand how computers work, and how they're designed, then sign up and let's build a computer. So this, um, uh, in the slide deck that I'm gonna go through here in just a minute, um, I'm part of a group that's uh, instructors. And so the two uh, creators are very liberal in their sharing of all of their information. It's all can be completely modified. You can do anything you want with it. Um, and so they're really great people to work with. I've gotten some emails back and forth with them, and they've just been tremendous. Um, and again, I'll share the, about the two people here. These links will all be shared. Um, the book uh, online, if you look for the elements of computer systems, this is the second edition. Most of the stuff I uh, took at the first half, I took through the first edition of the book. But now that I'm in the second, the software hierarchy part, I'm using this book. And I actually went through the first seven chapters, six chapters, and revisit them all to see if there was anything I could uh, glean from that. Um, the, the courses, uh, are. Th this is really what got me started. I had owned the book a couple of years prior to me starting the course, um, because just using the book, it was very difficult for me to figure out um, how to start wiring those first few circuits together. And I just lost interest because I just, you know, you just get discouraged. But when I, when I found this on Coursera, um, I don't know, I think I was just revisiting it. I went online to see if anything was new. And I found this course and Shimon and uh, Noam, they, they both teach this and it's excellent. I mean, it's really, I mean, I've had five years of college. I don't have a degree, so I'm not bragging. I just spent a lot of money in school um, if, trying to figure out what I wanted to do. Um, and so, I mean, I've been through a lot of classes. The, the only thing that I really could compare it to that I enjoyed was flight school. 
the two favorite things I've ever done, classroom, and it's because you're learning and doing, I think, for me. And maybe that's just my learning style. But I loved flight school, and I loved taking this class because I was learning while I was doing it. And I think that for me is just, maybe it just fits my learning style. But these two courses, and now I'm in again on the second half here. And there's some talk that they're gonna do one on networking too, which I'm really excited because I'm kind of interested in all the different networking models from the physical to the, you know, all these different OSI models and how that all works. That's really more closely related to my wheelhouse. So I would love to see them really create a program for the web, for the network. And they're, they're talking about creating that too. So, and then the other thing that I wanna say, um, what I'm just talking about it is uh, that this is a bit, was the other part that for me, it wouldn't have worked without this forum. Coursera's forum really stunk. It was really bad. There was just no, it just was real clunky and, and um, it just didn't work for me. But this one here, as you can see, I think I had like a hundred and, I don't know how many, 125 posts in that first half. I haven't even, I mean, maybe there's a few others. So, you know, there's, there's a real, there's a very active community and there's three or four or five people here that are just idiot savants. I mean, they just like, what don't you know about computers? It's ridiculous that the, 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 the people and the quality of, the, and just knowing how to answer your question without giving it away. And that's huge, right? Because somebody asks a question, the knee jerk is to answer it. But this is about discovery for me. This was really a, a journey of discovery. I was able to have all the aha moments along the way. And some of it was really hard. Some took me, they say six weeks. That's the only bogus thing about the forget the six weeks. I mean, unless this is all, I mean, if I, did, I, mean I don't know who these people are. I mean, but it ain't me. I mean, maybe six months, I think I have about six months and I spent more than five to you know, maybe 10 to 12 hours a week. For me, what I did is during that six months, I went to Panera at about 6.30 when they opened and I, and I spent about two to two and a half hours a day on this. That just, I got so into it. That was my morning routine. And I felt like unless I got there early, I was gonna be kind of cheating with the work I needed to do and everything else. So I got up early and that was my productive time, but it carved out and I just owned that booth at Panera for about six months. And um, so I can tell you that six week thing, I have no idea what they're talking about, but this, this uh, really made it work. The courses, the book and the forum combination, it's really doable by really anybody that's got you know, any kind of aptitude at all. But the forum was, I mean, you're just stuck. And I'm like, I can't see it, right? And so, and, and they're just really good at say, well, have you considered this or this? So they're really excellent there. So. Um, so yeah, so there's that. Um, so let me jump into the slides. And what I'm going to do is I've got my, um, I've got this open. Oops, let me close that. So, so I've got, these were my notes. This is what I did. So I'm going to follow the slides and I'm going to go back and forth. So this is the deck that was provided for instructors. So this is what they provided for me. I just didn't change my name there. Why? I'm not trying to, this, I didn't put this together. Um, again, I'm just getting my big boy pants on here. So um, this is uh, some of the value propositional stuff here, you know, from, from a simple NAND gate to the Tetris. Oh, I do want to show you one thing though. However, I thought it's kind of fun. Um, I'm going to open the CPU emulator. This is one of the tools that's provided. And I wanna show you kind of the culmination. So there would be no point in writing that assembler unless you could prove that it actually did what you wanted it to do, which was play Pong. So I'm gonna download the hack that that was what my assembler created. And I can see it in binary. I'm gonna turn off the animation and I'm gonna play Pong. And it's, it, this course does not cover any kind of optimization, okay? Or any speed or performance. Yep. So I'll let it, I'll let it crash. But this is Pong. This is what it plays. So this is the program that was supposed to be the cherry on top of this whole. So I started from an AND gate and I ended up running Pong. And so that's pretty cool. That feels, again, that flight school. It's like solo. 
It's like when the instructor got out of the plane and I had to fly it by myself. I'll never forget it, right? It's really cool. So I'm going to close that, get back to the slides. And here we go. So I don't know why they didn't call it Nanda Pong because I don't see any Tetris anywhere. It's a, kind of a little bit of an irony, but uh, I, I know, so do you know how to make that bar disappear? I'm a Zoom neophyte as well, obviously. No, that's okay. So if it's bothering you, I apologize. Okay. So there was the book, there was the course. Uh, they're just trying to say, and if you do hardware simulator, which I did search it, their tools come right up. It's really great. You don't even have to take the course. If you wanna play around with hardware and circuits, uh, it's a full blown uh, simulator, um, which is, uh, I'll just start it just so you can see it. So uh, they give you all these Java programs, these tools, CPU emulator, hardware emulator, and then it shows you pins and inputs and outputs and outputs, et cetera. So we'll close that. Okay, we'll close that. <clears throat> okay, so there's the book. Uh, I'm just going to kind of just go through some of this a little bit. This is just forest for the tree stuff. It's really just selling the program. Uh, you know, it's operating systems and algorithms, and it's really a program in a lot of colleges. They teach it at the end, like a 400 series. I don't know. They still do 400 series, like at the end, 500 series, just a forest of the trees type of program that kind of brings and culminates everything. Um, that's where it's commonly taught at universities. Um, there's, you know, hardware, architecture, programming languages, compilation, data structures, all of these types of things I'm learning at a deeper level. They were just words before, abstract words. Now I'm really starting to begin to understand uh, and moving into the hardware, uh, software hierarchy, it's even getting more because now we're really getting into starting with high level and then virtual machines and really the stack. I always hear about the stack, the stack, the stack. I understand what that is now. That's really kind of cool because so many things uh, and how the processors work. Uh, this is, I did actually put, that was the Sistine Chapel, in case anybody didn't know what that was, the uh, very popular Sistine Chapel. Kind of, uh, how is it here, you know, how am I supposed to, was there one before that? I thought, so how am I supposed to do it? Here's a logic gate, and I think there's supposed to be a, an on-off too. Oh, I must have messed it up. Anyway, this is just kind of the, the uh, with a NAND gate and, and a switch, uh, you, you're going to be able to build it and you're gonna get the tests. So human thought up here, I got an idea for a web scraper down to physical engineering and solid state engineering on both ends is where you start or begin depending upon how you wanna build. You don't go any deeper than, like they don't really get into how the NAND gate is built. There's a lot of technology to build that logical structure, but they don't go into that. They just start with that logical unit and starting from human thought down there. And then this is, I think this is all of the courses right here. So again, you, you, you have a given NAND gate and then layer upon layer, you build these, these layers. And this is where I'm gonna stop tonight, which is at the machine level. Um, just because I really don't have any knowledge of it beyond that. I'm taking the second half right now. So, and you guys are all software people anyway. So you probably understand all that and maybe the hardware end. Um, these are the gates that, that um, you'll build. Um, here's some of the, the logic on how to build them. If you're just given a NAND gate, then how would you build a NAND gate? I'm gonna show you some of mine. I don't think I'll be cheating because I don't think you're gonna be able to simulate this unless you have a photographic memory. I don't think seeing my implementations should throw you off when you have to write your own, I hope. If not, you'll have to close your eyes when we go through the, the tests. Um, so they give you a stub file. Uh, and then you write your implementation. They give you a test file, and I'll probably run one just so you can see a very simple one. And then this is some of, some of the logic, uh, symbolic logic and truth table logic. And I think, whoops, let's, yep. Yep, there's what the test file looks like. Um, so there's the first one. How would you write an AND implementation? I think they're gonna cheat and show you one. So this is the, the AND implementation, it was mine. If you only have, uh, actually, you, uh, they don't show you the NOT gate. So if all you have is an AND and you have to build a NOT gate, obviously you have to do it with a, with a NAND gate because that's all you have at your disposal. 
Once you go to the AND gate, then you'll have both a NOT and a NAND gate. So you just keep, that's what I mean, layer upon layer as you have more gates available at your disposal, then the sophistication of those gates increases. That's why they recommend that you uh, create those implementations in the order that they give them. You can do them in any order, but <laughs> I couldn't. Um, so that's, this is that hardware simulator I opened. You download your implementation, you upload a test script, you run it, and if it passes, you move on to the next one. Uh, most of the time, they don't work. I would say, other than the first couple, uh, it's a lot of trial and error, and you got to go back to your logic, you get your scratch pad out, and you just start building them. Uh, what was that? Uh, yep, those are the gates. Starting with not and, then you get into the multiplexers, exclusive or, et cetera, and we'll see some of those in just a little bit. Let's move through this, Let's see if there's any interesting stuff here. No, nope, just more gates, touching some stuff. This was the ALU. This was the most complex chip. This is the crown of the, of the chip set, and it took me a while to get this one figured out, but super satisfying to do it. I mean, really looking through my notes and looking through everything, I really honestly was having a, did I really do this? <laughs> I mean, I was like, did I do that? I mean, looking through all my stuff again, and I've revisited a couple of times and I'm like, you just, you know, it's amazing what your brain can figure out. And uh, so, yeah, I consider myself, you know, of, of, of average intelligence, but definitely not one of these people that you meet that can, you know, like in Moneyball, where they're going to have, you know, throw out figures to them, and they're going to figure it out. That ain't me. So, but uh, I hope that encourages somebody that it's definitely not something. Uh, when Noman Sh uh, Shimon say it's really for anybody that's interested in computer that's even written a trivial program, that's it. You've got the requisite uh, uh, skills. Um, let's see, there's A instruction and C instruction. Let's jump over now. I don't want this to get in the weeds here. I want to show you some of my stuff. Okay. So there was 15 gates. Those, these are the first 15 gates, and I'm going to go through them one at a time. And if anybody is interested in any of the details here, stop me, because I'm just going to keep flying through it. And then at the end, we'll do Q&A. And if anybody has any uh, questions about my implementations or about the program at all, then we'll go through that. So this is my NAND gate. It's given. Because I was just being anal, I guess I created, because I had this structure, I created a markdown file for each one of these. Uh, let me see, let me go to my, because I'll have to switch this anyway. So let me, let me just open the other folder with all my stuff. Okay. So just so you can have some reference, this was just me taking the course and then on my projects, my stuff, hardware, like we'll take this one here, there are my notes, and there's my markdown file. So I created, where was markdown? There it is. I snapped the picture. So I created one of these for each one of my um, gates, because again, I was learning about it. I wanted to see like, how are the different ways that you view the gate? You can view it from a, from this chipset API kind of way of dealing with it. You can see it this way. Um, and then later down here, a truth table. I wanted to see the truth table. I wanted to see the symbol, uh, which on some of them, this was a given gate, so there's no symbol, but this is the NAND gate. This is the one given, you don't create the implementation. The first implementation is a NOT gate. This is the stub file. You have an in and an out. That's, here's the, 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 the interface, right? In, out and the name, and there's my implementation in the middle. So this was kind of an aha moment for me too, actually in one of the software, um, you know, you're always passing in arguments. So even from a software standpoint, it's kind of a black box that you've got these inputs and outputs. What are you returning? So even between the hardware and software, there's a, there's a common language, which I thought was interesting. So this was already informing me, even though I'm just building a gate on how software is developed. So there is the gate. Here was my implementation that I ran and passed. And again, in, here it is. So the, the A is connected to the in, the B is connected to the in, and the out is connected to the out. And there it is. So you're just wiring it together and it's kind of fun. Uh, that first one, 
again, you have one gate. So what, is, what are you going to have to do? They obviously both have to connect. And what you'll do is you'll get a pad of paper out and you'll run through all of those scenarios. You say, okay, if, if in was one, then I know that, 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 the, uh, that I have one both here. So I have both one. Is that and? Yes. But, uh, but it's a nan, so it's negated here. So it's a no. So if I have, where's the truth table? Oh, I'm sorry. Yep. So if it's a one, it's a zero. So you can just test this. It's very, very simple for you just to take these and then look at them before you run them through the simulator, which until they get complex, you can do. So here's the and. So the and again, a little bit more complex. Again, there's the API. There's the chipset API. There's the truth table. Here's my schematic. This is what I came up with the past. And so again, I have a not gate, I have a NAND gate, and there it is. So that produces the truth table. And again, there's the NAND, there's the not, you wire everything together. You sometimes have to create wires and that's part of the hardware description language specification you learn. And there's tutorials on that because it's kind of a separate language that you have to learn. Um, and it's just wiring things together. And after a couple hours, your brain just begins to understand it intuitively. Um, so there's the implementation. And then this was just for me, because later I wanted to count like, how many gates did I have? So I added this later, like, what was my implementation? How many, how many gates? So there was two, there was, there, oh, I got a typo there. There's one and and one not. Here's the OR gate, a little bit more complex. This is mine. There's other ways to do it, I'm sure. Again, the implementation, let's just run this one. Let's just run that. So let's go and Let's start the hardware simulator and let's see if, um, if it'll pass. And I haven't done this in a while. So if I can't get it real quick, we'll move on. But I did want to show you that. So let's, um, let me see here. So we're going to load a chip. Do this, we're going to do projects. This is my old project. I put these in implementations. These were all implemented. So what are we at? Or let's find or oh nope, not or 16. Sorry. There we go. Or load a test script. And we'll show it. You can step through one at a time, or you can just run it. And you have a speed here, but I just, it's just this small gate. Ta da, there it is. That's how you know it passes. Comparison in successfully. And again, it's not kind of nice because you can see exactly what it's loading, those signals that it's loading into A and B. And so you can follow it. And that's really kind of fun to see what, how these signals are affecting all these gates, et cetera. So you can see yours. And then that's it. So let's get back here. So that's the OR gate. We just we just ran it and there's it all connected. I had three not and one and exclusive OR. Again, the truth table on that is it's when it it's one when only it, it, it's exclusive when it's OR not. And that's one here. Exclusive OR. There it is, a little bit more complex. And some of these took hours to come up with. And it wasn't just at the beginning, I thought. Well, I'll just start kind of randomly at the beginning, just trying to connect different things. And you realize that's, that's not the point here. <laughs> I'm supposed to be. So I had to go back and, and, and revisit basic algebra again, associative, distributive. Then you have De Morgan's law and idempotence and all these very basic algebraic seventh, eighth grade algebra classes. But I'm using it now, which is kind of fun, right? When I was in construction, you know, you learn... Uh, what is it? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Was that Pythagoreans or no? What is that one? Pythagorean, I get that. And so, and it's, but it's great when you're building a deck and you get to use it to make sure that it's square to the house, right? So this is kind of fun because I'm like, I don't remember any of this stuff. So a lot of times you learn that every logic gate can be expressed with and or a not. So no matter how complex a circuit is, you can reduce it to that. But then if you're saying, okay, I've got 150 gates here that are and or a not, 
well, that's not what we're looking for here. We got, you know, we want to use or 18s and we want to use, we want to get this down to where there's only seven gates, not 150. So how do you reduce that formula? Well, you have to begin to use algebra and all these. So, I mean, I literally had to go back and learn some of that algebra from seventh and eighth grade, which was kind of fun to revisit all that. Here's a multiplexer. A multiplexer is kind of a fun gate. Do I see? Oh, I don't show the gate. Let me see if I can find a multiplexer here. Let's go now. Did I? Where are we at here? Did we not see the multiplexers? Let's go and find a multiplexer. thought they spent some time with the multiplexer here. Nope. So, um, oh shoot. Let's, let's find a multiplexer, right? This is kind of an important one. Let's see if we can find an image of a multiplexer here. What does the multiplexer do? So the multiplexer takes a signal that Let's see, there we go. We'll just do Wikipedia, of course. So uh, it has a select bit. So what a multiplexer does is, is it, was, it was actually, it began in communication lines with shared communication lines. So, oh, this is a demultiplexer. Let's do the multiplexer. Here it is. So the multiplexer has two signals, uh, A and B or whatever, X and Y. And then a select bit, when it's turned on, so if it's zero, then, then, it, then the, the, the channel uh, lets in the signal from A. If it's one, if the select bit is one, then the B channel is the out. Make sense? So you have two options. You have, you have two signals coming into the multiplexer, A and B. What's out? You have one out. Which one is it gonna select? The select bit determines that selection. So if select bit is zero, A, select bit one, B. So let me see if I actually show that here. So see right here, select bit zero, A, select bit one, that's the truth table. So you have here select bit, this is, uh, this is the abbreviated. So I wanted both. So this is a full truth table right here. This is all the possibilities. There's the select bit. And then there's the output. So that it basically ends up being select zero A and the demultiplexer is the other direction. So the demultiplexer, and let's see, I had one not, two and, and one or gate. Yep, that was my multiplexer. Demultiplexer is the opposite. If the, it, it, and let, let's go back to that Wikipedia page. Let's go back and let's click on the demultiplexer. So again, we have an in, the opposite, and then we have two signals going out and the select bit determines which, if, if that incoming bit or signal goes to A or B. So it's, a, and so imagine now, if you have a multiplexer on one end of a circuit and a demultiplexer on the other end, they're gonna be going back and forth in synchronization. And there's where the, there's where the telecommunication start was. They had to share these signals and they had to be able to control them. So this is just a very basic elemental and you get into, which we're gonna see here in a minute, you have multiples. You have, so you have like a multiplexer four-way 16. So these are just single bit versions of some more complex that are coming up. But that's the demultiplexer. Does that make sense? Isn't that kind of cool? I don't know. It was for me just a kind of a word out there that I understood now how it was being used in computers. Now we get into multi-bit versions. So you have, you have 16 bits coming in and you have 16 bits going out and they're all not. So you just wire them up. This is pretty simple. So that's a not 16, what they call a multi-bit version of that gate. Again, just a bunch of not gates, that's it. And same thing, just a bunch of and gates. These were very, very simple since you already created them and you already had them in your arsenal. Now you just plug them together. Um, okay, so is this the OR2? Is this the OR16? Yep, so again, OR, identical, nothing too exciting there. Multiplets are 16s. 
So again, wiring up, you have one select bit that basically fans out into every single one of the multiplexers. So they're all getting the same signal at the same, they're all the, those single multiplexers. As you can see, when I'm wiring it up here, that select bit is wired to that incoming select bit. And so then you have all of these receiving that same signal. So if it's zero, all of these are gonna be A bits. So that's where you can begin to see how it gets really uh, very uh, usable in communication because you can have a lot of bits coming in and you've got one uh, single bit that, that controls that. So th those, they stay in synchronization. So there's that. We got an OR eight way. Um, that wasn't complex. Nope, that was again, uh, just an eight bit OR gate. Multi four way, a, a, a MUX four way 16. So this one had uh, four incoming, right? Instead of, instead of two, so you had four signals coming in and each one of those was 16 bits. So it's a four way 16, right? That's what that, and so in order to control four bits, you have to have two selection bits. So now this gets a little bit more complex. The truth table gets a little bit more complex. Um, and the you know, this wasn't that complex. But again, dealing with two signal bits, you can see how it begins to become more complex. So there's four ins. You can see how I had to bring them the next one in. And then this signal came out here. And it, it was uh, piped into this one. So you kind of had to wire them because you only have two uh, available in the MUX 16, but you've got four coming in in your interface. So th this is where, and again, there's no rocket science here, um, but it's, uh, there's now we've got an eight way 16. Now we've got three select bits because this is just a uh, binary right here, right? So now we have, we have eight signals coming in and this was not a four way. Oh yes, it was. I should have shown that should have said a 16. So we have 16, wait, 816. Yeah, I didn't, uh, I just didn't show the 16. Oh yeah, I did. I just didn't want to keep writing it. There it is up there. So again, the select bits and the muxes, and you can see you just start, you just keep using different things. I think, yep. See, I used a mux 16 there now. So up here, we just had the mux. Uh, there's the mux 16. Well, anyway, we, the first one we did, we just had the muxes. So now we got mux 16s, uh, dmux, four ways. Uh, it's just kind of reverse. And some of these, I just had to kind of just flip the paper backwards and just realize that's really pretty much what the, what was, uh, what was going on there to make it simple. Here's the, the eight way more complex. And again, I'm, I'm really just kind of firing through these because I don't want to spend too much time on the implementation. I just want you to see that starting with a very simple NAND gate and just building these one upon another, you've got another uh, and that's really all programs are in a way. That's just it. You're just using, when you download a package, you're just grabbing all this code available. It's already done in a nice package for you. You plug it in. Um, to me, that's still kind of abstract. I would love to think that I could do that in software, but I can't yet. I can put things together, but the way I hear software engineers talk and the way I see them work, I just know that I'm not there yet. There's just some lack of understanding about how to think about the problem, how to break the problem down. I can do it here. And now I'm excited to move on to the software to see kind of how to take these skills. Um, let me see if there is a, if there was anything about the software. So let me just kind of move quickly through these. Again, this is six weeks, ha ha, down to an hour. And, and I guess we're just now almost at about 10 minutes from an hour here. I just wanted to show, oh, yep, here's the next part. So this is the end, the big picture. And that's where you're at, the assembler and creating that. And that's the hardware platform. The, now, that, now the computer is just the abstraction. That's it. You don't have to worry about it anymore. You plug in and that's the last chip. The last chip was... Uh, insignificant. Well, that's not the word. It was, um, I don't know what the word is. It was, uh, it wasn't, it was just so easy to implement. Let's see how many, how many, uh, let's see. No, there's assembler. Where's the last chip? The chip is called, 
computer. Somebody's talking here. Oh, no. Okay, let me see. Computer architecture notes. CPU. No, that's that one will be complex. My what? I'm sorry, I just realized it's not in my stuff, it's here. It's here. It's computer HTML, uh, HDL, just computer. Oh, there it is, there it is. There's the computer, here's the hack computer, that's it. So that's that's when you're scooping up all of those, all the, you, you built the CPU, you built this and, and you built that. So then that's it, there's your computer. When you move on to the next part of the course, of course, then it's just, that's the hack computer. It's done and it's available. Now they give you their version of it for just performance. You can run it and I've done it. It's just not as fast as theirs that is optimized and written in Java or C or I think Java. So uh, then this is where I'm at right now. I'm actually uh, on the second part. I'm actually uh, just keeping some of my notes now in Evernote. But this is where I'm at. Uh, this is the next, let me see if I can find project seven. So this is where I'm at. I'm starting to, you know, create my notes and units in project seven and, and going through a bit. I, I, for me, I first like to do language immersion. I wanna understand kind of just like, I think like the way children learn languages, you know, they just, they're just picking it up. They're just listening to it. So sometimes I'll read the chapter, even though I don't, I don't stop. I just read it through a couple of times. I'll listen to the videos a couple of times. I won't stop. And then I'll start to come back. I just want to familiarize myself. That worked for me. I did that a lot in this. Um, and so th this is me just beginning to create uh, uh, notes for the second part, which is um, starting to deal with the front end, the back end of compilation. So this is kind of the roadmap here. So the hack binary code, which is what I did, then you, you keep backing it up. You've got assembly, then you've got VM code, and then they have a programming language called Jack. It's a very simple object-oriented language, similar to Java, but just stripped way down. And that's the language that you, that, they're not really trying to teach you Jack. They're just, you, you'll get, you'll be given Jack programs, and then you have to then create a, a compiler uh, that compiles to virtual machine code. That's where I'm at right now. And that's, um, let's see, assembly. They, they walk you through some, uh, let's see. Yeah, they're just, they're just kind of wetting the whistle here on different things. But um, anyway, that's where I'm at with the program. I'm in the software hierarchy part. And um, so that's, that's all I have to share. I don't think, let me see if there's anything else. I created something over here just to make sure. Um, I would say I would like to, you know, maybe share some of the serendipities. I just call them some of the things for me that, and, and you'll all have your own, right? But for me, one of the one of the benefits, uh, and no in particular order here. Um, I remember when I was creating one of the memory units, specifically one of the RAM units, um, and I just couldn't figure out how to get it. So I took some, some grid paper and I taped it together in my living room and it was about 10 feet long. And I don't think I used 10 feet. I probably used six feet though. And I wrote out all of the bits for every, and I saw the pattern. I looked at, but I had to go through that process. I had to, I had to see it. It kind of like one of those, I, I, I'll probably show my age here, but they used to have these in the mall and you'd go to this place and they have a picture and it just looked like these patterns. And if you stared at it long enough, then a picture would emerge like a sailboat on the sea or whatever. And it was kind of like that. It reminded me of that because I would just look at it and I would just be like, like, what's going on here? And then I would see the pattern and boom, within 10 minutes, I ran back to the computer and I, and I, and I tested it and it passed and it was just, you know, Eureka. Um, so for me, writing things out and really going through the process, probably the one at the bottom I should have said first, which is slowing down. That was a character thing, I suppose. But for me, this, uh, this, this course really caused me to slow down. I realize I get frustrated easy if I'm not learning it quickly. 
I have an expectation about what I think I should be able to know at a certain time. And if I'm not meeting that, I, 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 I get frustrated. And I don't know, it's just a character flaw, I guess. But for me, it was really learning to say, this is not a race. I'm not in a class. I'm not being graded next Tuesday on this module. Slow down and enjoy the ride. And that I had to really tell myself that the first couple months of this, every time I'd get frustrated. And by the end, I, I wasn't frustrated because I realized I'm not in a hurry here. Just take the time. If I have to go back and revisit algebra, go back. And if I got to go back and learn to count again, go back. It doesn't matter. I'm not being judged by anybody, um, which is maybe the one above that. It's never a waste. These are things that were serendipities to me, that it's never a waste of time to revisit first principles. And I found myself constantly going back. Matter of fact, uh, I, I, I homeschooled my kids and, and I had some old Life of Fred math books. And I actually, in the process of doing this, I started with goldfish and I went all the way through decimals and I did them all. And it was fun just by literally starting from kindergarten almost in, in the math. And they're really fun books with this character named Fred. But by going back during this and coming back kind of up to the beginning of algebra, because my goal was to get to calculus. I took that in college, but I wasn't paying attention. So my goal was, and I've, I've passed the date, but I wanted to get through calculus. I mean, at a college level and really understand it. So I thought, I'm just going to start at the beginning. And I was taking this course at the time and I realized nobody's judging me. And by revisiting even counting with human eyes, it's like amazing what you took for granted. I don't know, uh, but to me, I was just kind of just amazed. Uh, and so I thought, I really like this, this idea that it's always, it's never a waste of time to go back and revisit first principles because you br it's kind of this iteration where you bring all that you've learned and now you've got new eyes to see things. So anyway, um, the implementation interface abstraction became much more real and concrete in my mind. That was an important, and then the pattern. So those are my serendipities, and that's my talk. So, <laughs> okay. So you guys have been so very patient, and with my foibles at the beginning, thank you so much for, for, your, for your help. So how many of those uh, gates did you end up using? Well, I used all the gates. Um, the question was, how many gates did I use in the final computer? So that list of those gates, those 15 gates, um, I used all of them. All of them. Well, and, and at the beginning, a matter of fact, when I was at the end, there was one that I just felt was clunky. And I realized I had not used an OR 16 or an OR 8. I thought, where did I miss it? Right. And I went back and I found the place I knew exactly where it should have been. And I replaced all these or gates with one uh, or eight. So you, you can see the logic in this complexity as it was building from the NAND. And they kind of gave it away a little bit because if they have an exclusive or here, it probably means that when you're going to do the mux, you might be using the exclusive or. Right. So you could see the progression. And so because I followed that progression, I always just had those in my arsenal. So if I had seven gates now and I'm on my eighth, I know there's a good chance I, I could potentially use all seven or and that didn't happen very often, but um, I used them all and they, you could see where they came in handy. The one specifically, which I thought was interesting for me was in some of the memory. Oh, oh my gosh. I never even, I never even did the half adders. Here's all the gates. Here's the half adder. There, there's hardly any here. Here's the, here's the full adder. I had to add, we had to add. Here's the and 16. And the ink, this is a very, the ink 16. And then there's the ALU. And I didn't even put all my pictures for here. Again, I didn't do this for this talk. I had all this. I didn't, I didn't edit any of this. <laughs> this. This was my life. My family was like, please do not talk about this anymore. <laughs> Oh, 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 yes, 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 share screen. Oh, I have to, I have to rifle through these real quick, guys. Okay. Okay. So this was, I think the other one had about 10, 7, 8, 9. These were 
the, the, the Boolean logic. No, no, not that one. Oh, okay, where are we at here? There we go. So this is a Boolean arithmetic. So then you had a half adder, exclusive or, and an and. You had a full adder, because you got to add. That's what computers do, right? We knew that. What? I don't even know how I did that. There's the add 16 with a bunch of uh, a half adder and some full adders. 15 fulls, one half. An, an incrementer, 16. So it does what it says. It increments one at a time. One, two, three, four, five. And then there's my ALU. And that was the, the most complex chip. There's my ALU. And that's all the chips that I had to use in the ALU. And then let's see sequential logic. This was the memory. And you have a given gate here. This is another given gate. It's called the flip-flop. And it's a clocked gate. I'm sorry, I'm pushing back the time now. But this is a clocked gate um, where out T is in T minus one. So it's just the previous signal. So it's just, it's a flip-flop. And that's what it does. That's its point is the out is the time clock minus one, the previous one. That's all. And you could get it. You could switch it around the other way. So then what you have to do is you have to create a bit. And this is the most elemental part of what makes the computer's memory remember. Because the load bit determines whether the signal of in is fed on the next clock or not. And if it's not, then it just remembers the last. And that's what this out does here. It comes back in and there's where the mux comes in. So if the load bit is zero, then it just, it, the out coming out of the, 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 uh, the data flip-flop is just fed right back into the mux. So that the next clock cycle, so that it just keeps repeating unless the load bit is one, then it takes in the new signal. So that the next clock cycle. So that this is the most important element of memory right here. And then you just build these just layer upon layer, right? So then you have a register, which is 16 bits. You just have 16 of these bits. And then this is where I had to write, I had to see it. As you're gonna see, it gets very complex. Here we go. So now we have a, a, a MUX here and a DMUX on the back end. And this is a RAM 8. And that starts to get complex because, you're, because you have to determine which load bit and then which register comes out. So both have to have to be, so you have the incoming and then you have the load bit. And then you go to the 64, which of course you built, use the RAM eights. And then you go to the, to the RAM 512, which uses the RAM 64s and you just keep building it. And the muxes get more complex until you get, I think this is the last one. And it got real gnarly. And this is the one I drew out. I think there was maybe two or three before this, because actually after I got it, then you just, it's just scaling. There wasn't any new logic to learn. And there's the RAM 16. I'm sorry. There's the RAM 16. That's the last memory. And then you had the program counter, which was if for the CPU, you've got to be able to, uh, to count. What was the incrementer? Program counter. 16 bit of uh, in crude. Did I use an ink? I don't know. Sorry about that. Okay. And then, and then there was the machine language, which we don't, this is, I had to write machine language. You had to write a program in machine language. So this was good. This one just does, uh, what is it? Multiplication. I don't remember which one this one does, but, uh, oh, there's the multiplication. This one is a fill. It just fills the screen black. This one multiplies, look at a lot of code. Look at all this code, just to multiply two numbers. Um, and this is when that's all you got. And then there's the CPU, which like I said, that's, that's the, the complex chip. So anyway, I just wanted to go through those. So let me stop sharing again. Well, that's it. Thanks, Doug. Yep, and uh, I'll share my contact information. If anybody, uh, like Anessa said, 
we're going to have a support group or some type of thing with this. Um, but anything I can share or help in any way, shape or form, please uh, don't hesitate to reach out to me.